right now on No More Downloads. Busted. If there's a DJ hip hop that's sleeping with a transgender woman, hallelujah. Let them have it. A prominent New York hip hop DJ gets arrested for allegedly having sex in a car with a transgender woman. So, why have the high rollers of hip hop suddenly gone silent? I'm Kendall Hogan. Is the homophobic fringe of hip hop finally singing a new tune? If you, no, you say it's not fine and you're gonna get attacked. You're gonna write apology notes. Then, read my lips. I think we all know what he said. Kobe Bryant apologizes for unleashing the F word at a ref during a heated argument. So, should all be forgiven? I'm Janora McDuffie. Are Kobe Bryant's fine apology and public service announcement enough? My sisters, your kisses solicit pleasure from places within me I don't even know existed. And it's the underground hotspot where LGBT poets thrive. We'll take you to Hollywood's best kept secret, the damn slam. Plus, I had a very unfortunate incident where my bike fell off on the freeway. With just weeks away from her bike ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles, is Janora having second thoughts? You okay. It's all straight ahead on No More Download. Hi, I'm Martina Wesley, and this is No More Download.tv. It's a celebration of all things music. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Grammy Museum here in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. I'm Kendall Hogan. And I'm Janor McDuffie. And if you are a music lover like we are, oh, yeah. then today's your lucky day. We're going to take you on a tour of some of the exhibits, including a special tribute to hip hop. You like us some hip hop. Yep. But everyone knows the relationship between hip hop and the LGBT community is strained at best. Yeah, you're right, Kendall. But today, Mark Noble takes a look at some recent developments that might just be the first sign hip hop is changing its tune. Mark? Well, Janora and Kendall not only changing its tune, but taking it to a new level as more and more LGBT hip hop artists are taking on their critics, not only behind the scenes, but also behind the mic. I think that speaks to the issue and the challenge that we have as communities of color or urban communities is that we're not open and honest about what's really going on. Now this came from the whole incident that happened over the weekend with Mr. C. New York's Hot 97 hip hop DJ, Mr. C. According to police, arrested March the 30th in the early morning hours for alleged lewd conduct. C, whose real name is Calvin Laburne, was busted for public lewdness. According to the police report, the man in question, Lawrence Campbell, a drag queen known as Brooklyn, the Pink Lady. It's the one story that had all of New York radio abuzz. It's about a lot of the drama that's been going on outside of the station about our co-worker, Mr. C. I guess Mr. C's down and out. He can't even fight for himself because, you know, he's under fire right now. And I, I believe he's due back in court in June 1st. June 1st. Right. June 1st. Yeah. I know they don't think he was going something in the car and showing up they did. This interview seen on the local New York website, the 20-year-old details what happened that morning. I was in the village having fun with my girls that night and got caught up in some bullshit with some I don't know who he is or what he want to do in his life. If there's a DJ hip hop that's sleeping with a transgender woman, hallelujah. Let him have it, because I think that's great. I kind of feel bad that we're, that we're in this such judgmental society where he might have felt shamed by the community, the hip hop community. Might have felt shamed, might have felt like maybe he wanted to do it in the shadows, AKA in a car. And you have to like, wait, so could he possibly be someone who's gay? So yeah, it, it, it's very naive for a lot of people to think that no gay man is in hip hop or woman. After the arrest, Mr. C released this on his Twitter page saying, never was I in a car with anyone when I was detained. The facts will come out and show what is being reported is totally untrue. But this report also begs a larger question about hip hop changing its tune when it comes to the LGBT community. Here's what 50 Cent told Hot 97's Miss Info on YouTube. I recognize Mr. C as the guy who offered us Biggie. So he, he means that much to the culture. Who is to judge you when there's an audience that is probably one of the strongest audiences, if you look at Lady Gaga's career, that says that that's fine. And so, you will look crazy if you say that it's not fine, right? right. Like, if you No, you say it's not fine and you're gonna get attacked. You're gonna yeah. write apology notes. A lot of people sometimes get caught up with just not accepting themselves for who they are. So they often project that energy onto other people who choose to be free and live the life um, that makes them most comfortable. 
Little by little, hip hop silence on this incident could indicate an effort to discontinue the usual homophobic ways. Some say it's because in this day and time, gay bashing is no longer considered cool, while others say sagging record sales and the overall recording industry means that the artists can't afford to alienate anyone. There's so many down low folks in the hip hop community that are mainstream right now that, you know, it doesn't matter. We're gonna do what we do and we're gonna rep for them even though they're not repping for themselves. Join me in honoring the godfather of hip hop, the guru of human rights, the brother Russell Simmons. Furthering to bridge the gap, leaders in hip hop stepping forward. In March, hip hop pioneer Russell Simmons was honored by the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation for his work to unite. We're optimistic that we're going to break through, and, and leaders like him, straight leaders uh, in, that, in that sort of artistic world, are very, I think, going to be key to breaking through, to breaking that silence. So. Allies like Wally, whose management canceled his appearance at last year's DC Pride, a move which had the LGBT community fired up. Yet he decided to perform anyway. And the irony is that after I did it, like it was kind of like, oh, nobody mentioned it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like, oh yeah, he did it. It's over now. But it's all good. Like I don't do it for that. I do. It. I mean, it's DC first and foremost. It's a DC event, and I, you know, I represent my area to the fullest. It, it could be up to somebody like, you know, to just stand up and, and be like, yo, everybody, be cool. Maybe it's me. Everybody be cool. Let's be cool. And what this just might do is inspire the major recording artist who is LGBT to be comfortable in their skin. We are downtown at the Grammy Museum. Mark Noble, no more down low. Back to you, Janora. Thanks so much, Mark. Excellent reporting, as always. Now, I am here with Waka. She is a curator here at the Grammy Museum and the one that's responsible for bringing hip hop, a cultural odyssey, to Los Angeles. Yeah. How you doing today, Good. Waka? Good. How are you? I am great. Good. Now, my first question is, what makes your exhibit different from any other ode to hip hop? Well, I think what makes the Hip Hop Cultural Odyssey so much different is the fact that we cover a broad span of hip hop. So not just the music, but we fuse in the culture. So you'll find sneakers in that exhibit, um, boom boxes, along with the outfits and lyrics as well. And out of all of the artifacts, which one is your favorite? My favorite has to be the LL Cool J um, troop suit and his Kangol hat. I'll stick with that one, hands down, my favorite. All right, Waka. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank we look so forward much. to seeing what else you bring to Los Angeles and here at the Grammy Museum. Great. Now let's go find Kendall. Let's see yeah. what he discovered in the museum. Kendall? Janora, the Grammy Museum is four floors of fun-filled interactive exhibits, such as this one dedicated to Michael Jackson. It's located at LA Live, which is directly across the street from Staples Center, home of the LA Lakers. Now speaking of the Lakers, what does my boy Kobe got himself into now? I think we all know what he said. If Kobe Bryant had just one wish, it may have been that the world couldn't read his lips. But that wasn't the case when he used an F word to lash out at an official. I thought it was really sad. In his most angry point, in his most venomous point, he, he chose to use that word, which for me was hurtful. That's the sentiment of Anwar White and many other members of LA's Lambda Basketball League, a sports-minded group of gay men and lesbians who play and compete without fear of taunting and discrimination. I think it really sent a message, you know, for all of the kids and all of the fans that really look up to him. You know, when he says something like that, it, he's condoning it. There are all kinds of different people in the world. That's what makes the world special. So in an effort to make amends, Kobe and his teammates released this public service announcement. But so far, the PSA, $100,000 fine by the league, and a formal apology still leave some to say, that's not enough. Because we're all in this together. I think he needed to do more community work. I think he needed to speak out and talk to people and not give a, a half apology. Really put his actions behind his words. But in all fairness, putting actions behind words is something that the NBA League has been trying to do all season long. Thank you to David Stern and the NBA. Back in February, the LA Clippers became the first team in the NBA's history to host an LGBT fan night. Wow, how times have changed, right? It went from, shh, you can't talk about it, to now, 
You got games that they have nights for games. Who, who would ever thought that could happen? I never thought I would see the day. Action. Eh. Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. Then came this Grant Hill PSA for the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network. And did you catch this priceless moment when Toronto's number 20, Landro Barbosa, playfully grabs the hand of Reggie Evans on the way to the locker room? So what more does Kobe need to do? Do I think he hates gay people? No, I don't. Andrew Moran sits on the board of directors for the Lambda Basketball League. Two of our players were interviewed by TMZ, and uh, we did extend a informal invitation. Uh, but I'll, I'll now make it a formal invitation for Kobe Bryant. We would love for him to come out and show his support by coming out to one of our open gyms or uh, possibly in some other way getting us involved with the Lakers organization. Uh, you know, just to show that, you know, he is sorry and he wants to show his support for the community. Since the Lambda Basketball League extended its invitation to Kobe, there's been no response so far. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how this one plays out. Hmm, I guess we will. We will have to. You know that dress? <laughs> how could anybody not know that dress? That's the Versace dress that J-Lo wore, 2000 Grammy Awards. Absolutely, one of the more yes. memorable moments from the Grammy. That's what I'm talking about. She was working every She worked Garfus. it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, coming up next on No More Down Low, we discovered an underground Hollywood hotspot where LGBT poetry thrives. It's called the Damn Slam. The slam. And with less than a month ago before my co-host's monumental charity bike ride, she getting cold feet. Don't go anywhere. We're going to have more drama than a reality show when we get back here. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to No More Down Low. I'm Kendall Hogan and we're here at the Grammy Museum in downtown Los Angeles. You can find an exhibit on any kind of music you like. Pop, country, rock, and even gospel, one of my favorites. Everything from Kirk Franklin to Mahalia Jackson, it's all here. Now let's see what Janora's doing here. All right, Kendall. Part of the hip hop exhibit pays tribute to the roots of the genre, the poets, groundbreaking poets such as Gil Scott Heron and the last poets. Well, while we're on the topic of poetry, we're going to take you to an LA hotspot where LGBT poetry lives. Get ready for the damn slam. Move over, deaf poets, and get ready for poetry with a twist. This is the damn slam. My sisters, your kisses solicit pleasure from places within me I don't even know exist. Homophobia, sexism, racism, you, me, us, non-conforming. If you walked away now, I wouldn't blame you, but let's pretend for a moment that oppressive voices do not exist. Damn Slam is Hollywood's monthly hotspot where up-and-coming gay and lesbian poets step up to the mic to spit their original works. It's chic, it's raw, it's underground. And it has just one primary focus. To get the poetry, the, the LGBT poetry, gay and lesbian words out there, because it's not heard enough. Welcome to the Damn Slam. Damyo Lee is Damn Slam's creator and MC. And I want the LGBT the poets to keep writing their poems, keep writing their gay poems. We want your words. Your words are needed. When I realized I love women, I realized I was sinning. It was written. Deep in a book, people cherish more than a relationship with a higher being. Slams like this can be found in nearly every city in the U.S., but only a few hold open mics exclusively for LGBT poets and fans. I've just been writing since I was like 14. He says, he could love me if his flaws didn't get in the way. I said, if he didn't have any, I wouldn't want him to love me in the first place. If he were flawless, what would I have to look forward to? Edwin Botney is an emerging young poet in Los Angeles. In the world of slams, it's rare to see a black gay man coming to the stage. I'm hoping it, it takes me to just a larger, a, a larger, I guess, platform to be able to speak for like I said, people who, who can't speak for themselves. 
um, which is, I think, a constant goal that we all have um, as poets, um, specifically in the gay community. The clothes I wear are not my insecurity blanket. Sometimes I just wear skinny jeans because I know I look so <laughs> damn. Isn't that amazing? Well, to hear the full compositions of some of the poets, go to the No More Download website and click on the bonus video feature. Kendall? We're just checking out this great Sam Cooke exhibit. Everything you ever wanted to know about Sam Cooke, even as a copy of his contract for writing A Change Is Gonna Come, one of my favorite songs. But let's get now to part two of Janora's training for the AIDS Life Cycle Ride, her 500 plus mile ride from San Francisco to Los Angeles. She has less than 30 days ago. And is she ready for the challenge? I'm sure she is. Today I am not riding because I don't have a bike. I had a very unfortunate incident where my bike fell off on the freeway. I didn't know if I was even going to continue because it was so traumatic and somebody told me something to make me say I'm not going to quit the ride. They said, we know it hurts to lose that bike and we know it was a traumatic situation, but think about how you would feel if you or someone you loved was diagnosed with AIDS or lost your battle to AIDS. How can I say no? So today, I am meeting an amazing woman named Doreen Gonzalez. She has been riding in this AIDS life cycle ride ever since its inception, way back in the 90s. And she is um, loaning her bike to me for the ride. This is the bike. This is the number one bike. The me. number one bike, okay. Yes. So the number one bike from 1994. 1994. 94, yes. So this bike has got a lot of history. It's got a lot of history, if it could talk. <laughs> <laughs> it would say whatever is on the ride was stayed on the ride. Now, is 1994 the first year you rode on this bike in yes. the ride? Yes, in the ride, in the ride. I rode this bike on the California AIDS ride 1994, May 1st. Wow. Yeah. Now, was that the first AIDS ride that you ever? Ever in California. Ever in California. Yes. And you've been riding every year? Every year. Ever since? Ever since, for 17 years. What's yes. going on here? Are well, you riding, Doreen, <laughs> or what? What's going on? Well, I did, I broke my foot. <laughs> I broke my foot um, actually uh, routing the positive head uh, ride, and uh, I broke it a month ago. And the doctor, I convinced the doctor to uh, actually give me a chance to cycle with one foot and train with one foot. I don't pedal with this foot right now. I'm okay. a trainer. And uh, in a couple of weeks, we will be going to see if it's uh, yay or nay. Without you and your bike and oh. your experience, I would have not been able to finish. Oh, sweetie. Oh, sweetie. So I just Here. truly appreciate you, Doreen. And you, we are riding together We're going to ride together. <laughs> We're all three going to ride together. We're all three going to ride together. Ride together. Ride together. You OK, sweetie? Yeah, I'm OK. We're going to be good. We're going to be great. We're going to be great. And we're going to cross the finish line. <laughs> we are going to cross the finish line. Yes, one yes. way or another. That's right. Thank you. Thanks. One pedal stroke at a time. One pedal stroke at a time. That's right. All right, so I gotta ask you, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, yes, yes. All right, you know we're pulling for you, right? Thanks, Kendall. Okay, we got your back, we're here, we're gonna support Thanks, 100%. Guys. What if someone still wants to make a contribution? Can oh, we still do it? absolutely. Just go to the No More Download website and make a pledge there. I do still have a fundraising goal to meet, and I would love your help. I got you. Thanks. I got you. That's it for our show today, folks. Here's what's coming up on our next show. On the next No More Download, it was the YouTube clip that went viral. A transgender woman is viciously attacked in a fast food restaurant in Baltimore. Thank God 
that I am in recovery and that I don't have that stigma of that, all that negativity as far as that part of the lifestyle, you know, with the drugs and the alcohol and the prostitution and all that. It really wasn't a choice for me. I had to leave. I had to leave because it was a matter of life and death. No more down low explorers living the transgender life. All that and more on our next episode of No More Down Low. And be sure to join us, because I'll be there waiting at the closing ceremony. As our girl comes across that finish line in the AIDS life cycle ride, she will complete it. She will be done. We will be cheering. Yes. She will be tired. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> so, from the Grammy Museum in downtown Los Angeles, reminding you to spread love and not hate, I'm Janora McDuffie. I'm Kendall Hogan. We'll see you next time. I know you're going to turn it out. Hope so. Oh, no, you will. Yeah. I got you.